All right. Hey guys, hope everyone's safe and uh, keeping themselves busy and having fun at home. Um, I'm going to be talking about the pathophysiology of pulmonary disorders today. And uh, I'm going to talk about three things, three, three diseases um, that primarily, every disease primarily either affects the uh, <clears throat> ability of the lungs to exchange gases um, and uh, or they affect the heart um, so the three general types of diseases uh, airway diseases that affect uh, the airways that carry gases into and out of the lungs primary ca primarily causing a narrowing or blockage of the airways such as asthma COPD bronchiectasis I'm going to talk about COPD uh, lung tissue diseases that affect the structure of the lung uh, tissue, scarring or inflammation results in um, these restrictive lung diseases, pulmonary fibrosis and sarcoidosis uh, are examples of those tissue diseases. Um, and then lung circulation diseases that affect, affect the blood vessels in the lungs caused by clotting. Um, scarring, inflammation of the blood vessels, and also affect heart function. Um, an example of this is uh, pulmonary hypertension that I'll be talking about. And I'm starting on slide 13. Sorry, I didn't say that first. Um, COPD, uh, the pathogenesis of COPD, um, f as far as uh, chronic bronchitis is concerned. It's a uh, mucous gland enlargement, goblet cell hyperplasia, and mucociliary dysfunction causing excessive mucus production, re uh, reducing the lumen. And the major site of increased airway resistance is airways less than uh, two millimeters usually. And uh, fibrosis and smooth muscle hypertrophy may occur along with ex excess mucus production and cellular infiltration in the peripheral airways. Um, emphysema pathogenesis, uh, the inflammatory process, the inflammatory response rather, releases the uh, mediators for inflammation and enzymes that damage the lung parenchyma. Proteases like elastase and matrix, metalloproteinases, uh, MMPs, Released by these inflammatory cells break down the connective tissue of the alveolar walls uh, and the septae and a loss of um, elastic recoil leads to diminished exp expiratory flow rates and uh, air trapping and airway collapsing. So the pathophysiology for COPD, which is these two disorders, uh, which you know, um, so emphysema, pathophysiology, recurrent damage to the alveoli eventually leads to septal destruction along with the capillary bed, terminal bronchioles and alveoli being destroyed. Match deficit exists between uh, ventilation and perfusion. Over time, hyperventilation develops and cardiac output drops, which leads to poor blood flow. Um, in a relatively well oxygenated area, uh, which results in the rest of the body suffering from hypoxia. And uh, the low cardiac output leads to pulmonary cachexia, which induces weight loss and muscle wasting. That's why you see uh, people with this disorder are very skinny. Um, the pathophysiology for um, chronic bronchitis is mechanisms that lead to inflammation in bronchioles and mucus secretions narrow uh, the airway lumen. The body's response leads to a drop in ventilation and compensation with a rise in cardiac output. Increased perfusion in the areas of poor ventilation causes hypoxia and secondary polycythemia. Uh, leads to decreased oxygenation and um, deoxygenation both of the blood resulting in respiratory acidosis, which means you're holding too much CO2. Uh, chronic hypercapnia uh, and respiratory acidosis lead to arterial vasoconstriction in the lungs with the retrograde pressure buildup. And the uh, right ventricular pressures continue to rise in the heart causing right ventricular failure, um, which is known as core pulmonal. 
The next one I'm talking about uh, is pulmonary hypertension. And uh, I'm talking about these next two just because they're kind of more advanced. Well, COPD is pretty advanced, but uh, these are specific advancements in, in uh, lung disorders. Um, and this one is a high blood pressure in the lungs and occurs when the pulmonary art arteries become clogged and narrowed. And the heart, and particularly the right heart ventricle, becomes overworked in order to properly pump the blood resulting in uh, enlargement and weakening and ultimately death of the heart unfortunately uh, the pathophysiology has two main mechanisms increased pulmonary vascular resistance and increased pulmonary venous pressure so those are kind of the two ways that it that it uh, proliferates increased pulmonary vascular resistance is the result of destruction of the pulmonary vascular walls uh, or pathologic vasoconstriction, or both. Vascular wall remodeling that's associated with pulmonary hypertension is caused by different factors. Um, vasoconstriction, endothelial smooth muscle proliferation, hypertrophy, chronic inflammation. Additionally, um, vasoconstriction is related to thromboxane and Endothelin 1 enhanced activity also causes pulmonary pressure, increased pulmonary pressure and endothelium injuries that activate coagulation, exacerbated by a decrease in tissue plasminogen activator, activator activity that occurs because of uh, platelet, dysfun platelet dysfunction, plasminogen activator inhibitor type 1, and fibrinopeptide A. Uh, there's a high activity and thrombotic coagulopathy. Increased pulmonary venous pressure is the second way it kind of proliferates. Um, and this is a result of other medical conditions that have harmed and increased pressure in the left heart ventricle. The excessive stress causes more pressure in the arteries, which results in acute injuries in the alveolar capillary wall, uh, causes edema and um, can also cause irreversible thickening of the walls of the alveolar capillary membrane, compromising lung function. Patients, uh, and in particular older women, may suffer uh, this with preserved ejection fraction. Uh, this, con this condition is more dangerous for those who suffer from metabolic syndrome as a comorbidity. Patients have little chance of survival if the, ma if the mean pulmonary artery pressure to pulmonary artery occlusion pressure gradient um, is higher than 12 millimeters of mercury. Or if the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure to pulmonary artery occlusion pressure gradient is higher than 6 millimeters of mercury. There is a third pathogenesis of pulmonary hypertension that's idiopathic. Uh, they've done a lot of research with not very much uh, conclusion but um, there's an endothelium defect usually uh, and there's five mutations that they think may cause this uh, ALK1, ENG, I don't know what they are so I'll ignore those for right now but may also be in the foundations of uh, yeah never mind uh, pulmonary fibrosis is the next topic um, and that is the end stage of it, it's a culmination of several different parenchymal lung diseases uh, characterized by excessive matrix deposition and destruction of the lung architecture finally leading to respiratory insufficiency and um, so this kind of happens uh, this can happen after epithelial damage endothelial damage uh, destruction of capillary or basement membrane, um, leakage of the lungs out, uh, out into the rest of the body or leakage into the lungs from the rest of the body, platelet active, uh, too much platelet activation, um, or other clotting factors that are out of whack. And then, uh, that leads to epithelial fibroblastic interaction, uh, kind of a pathologic interaction between the two release of profibrotic cytokines, um, myofibroblast recruitment, proliferation and differentiation, uh, provisional matrix formation, and this is all pathologic formation. Um, defective reepithelialization is the result. 
and then uh, aberrant repair and fibrosis is the end stage exaggerated ECM accumul accumulation lack of matrix uh, degradation after epithelialization and progressive lung remodeling <clears throat> uh, it uh, essentially changes the honeycomb structure of your heart of your lungs um, which can uh, lead to death unfortunately uh, so that's the a light pathophysiology of the a few of them of the more common um, pulmonary disorders that cause um, death um, in summary uh, don't do drugs and by drugs I mean smoking cigarettes uh, aerobic exercise helps improve the body circulation this it's like uh, changing the oil for your car it, it, it helps everything including your lungs um, helps improve shortness of breath strength of the heart and lungs and uh, not just strength it keeps them um, plastic and uh, able to uh, able to um, respond to stress better uh, diet can help prevent inflammation of the lungs and make sure that mucus doesn't get built up too much in the lungs uh, garlic and water water is always good keeps you lubed keeps you flushed um, yeah so those two are good examples of these and um, yeah I think that is it. Have a good day, everybody. I hope I see you all soon.